thank you for being here, first of all. Hello, how are you? Uh, Daniela, it's a pleasure to be here. I am very fine and it's, uh, it's a pleasure to connect. I live in Nairobi, uh, which is the capital of uh, Kenya. Uh, but I also live in, uh, within Nairobi uh, in a community called Korogocho, which is uh, one of the largest, uh, among the largest uh, informal settlements. I was inspired by the ability to use arts and sport or cultural expression to highlight uh, some of the challenges uh, we face as uh, young people and also my community. So. Together with my friends, uh, we started an organization called Hope Raises Initiative. And uh, our main uh, objective was to amplify young people's voices. We run a culture center where we open a, it's an open safe space for children and youths from the informal settlements. And I am the, the director of this organization, of course, working with other young people. Tell us something. Um we don't know yet about your city or your community? I think majority of people don't know that uh, Nairobi is the only city with um, a national park, probably, in the world. I think it kind of reminds us of, uh, with the COVID pandemic, which, which can also be connected to, to nature and environment and climate change, uh, to be conscious of the climate. There, there are a lot of argument that COVID is, is as a result of climate change. So when I, when I look at Nairobi city and uh, being able to be close to nature, um, we, yeah, we need to consider even in our intervention about uh, the effect of climate change. In the light of this pandemic, your organization has come up with a very um, special solution to reach people that cannot be reached by communication means of the of the municipalities and to bridge the the digital gap tell us more about your initiative we have the talking wall project which is a an, an intervention that focuses on using a, a graffiti arts a mural to advocate for a change in our community uh, we realized that, that uh, there's so many uh, people who did not understand the magnitude of COVID-19 and this is because there was no proper information and because of the lack of access to tools, for example, internet, television, radio and even newspaper, most of them cannot afford under the, the $1 per day, for instance. So uh, we came up with this idea to target a specific uh, public spaces where people pass uh, when they are going to work or when they're coming back or they pass quite often. And together with a group of artists, we decided to work together also with the community and do uh, installation of graffiti and mural that they could relate to and were able to interpret the message about what they were supposed to do. Excellent. What are the main learnings from this experience? What are things that, that worked well, things that didn't work well? One of the key lessons uh, we learned is that the indigenous uh, knowledge and the skills and the ability of communities to respond to crisis whenever uh, there's a crisis like this one, uh, it's something that has been neglected. Policy makers, duty bearers, they need to also to uh, look at a different aspect of what is defined as development because uh, COVID has really exposed that notion. In, in a country like Kenya and especially in a poor communities like ours, uh, we still have a very negative notion about art and the role of artists. Uh, they still perceive artists as uh, people who don't know what they're doing. Uh, so it's upon uh, the artist to see, like this, is, this was the right moment to to respond and to, sh to show the community that art actually has a, has a role to play. I think later after we started, uh, we've seen a lot of other uh, youth groups and communities uh, borrowing the same uh, model and even the government uh, later responded by uh, developing up, coming up with another uh, project that uh, many artists who applied were able to do installation in their communities.